I was going to fit an Essex flange to this because I preferred to do that than use the S flange in this particular situation where we've got just over 600 millimeters. I think we've got about three feet of distance between the top of the cylinder and the bottom of the cold water tank, which by the book is enough. You could leave it like that. But I'm gonna fit the Essex flange just to show you because some people are a little bit daunted by that. Now this is an Essex flange and I'm gonna show you how to fit this in the side of a cylinder which might seem like an impossible task to fit it from outside, but it's actually quite clever. What we've got here is a chart. Now this is a 22 millimeter flange. So it says in the instructions, we need an inner hole of an inch and a half. And if you look at that, that's just slightly over. And then on the outside, we need one of two and a half. And you can see that's slightly outside of there. So I've got to disconnect this. Pipe. This is the feed pipe to the pump and I'm going to disconnect this from I've drained the cylinder down by the way with the hose pipe It's important that you drain the water off the cylinder. So now I can disconnect this Oh Bit of water It's always a bad day when you get wet if you're a plumber so when you're deciding where to put this, you don't want to go too low down because the water is hottest at the top of the cylinder, but you don't want to go on this part of the cylinder and you don't want to be too near that immersion heater because we've got to put a 75 millimeter pipe straight through the flange into the cylinder. And if it were by the immersion heater, it would be hitting the immersion heater. You also don't want to do it too near the coil, although the coil is lower down on this, so we're all right. Get yourself a new hole saw. Don't mess around with old hole saws because you just need to do this. I've got it on speed two, and we just need to drill it in one brave move, if you like. There you go. Now we're through to the copper. I'll get rid of the insulation first because I don't want that to be pushed down inside. I want to get that copper piece, if I can, inside that hole saw. That's it. There's a bit of copper. Reasonably clean hole. So I'm just going to use my little big burring tool just to wipe around that. Be careful to get all the sharp bits off. The other reason that it's important to do this is because I can feel scale on the wall of that cylinder. This is a hard water area. You can just feel it scaled up there. So we don't want that washer sitting on the scaled That's the S flange. That'll work, it'll be all right. That's that, safely capped off. Now comes a bit where we've got to concentrate. They give you the little wire hook here. And what we need to do is we need to thread that into the thing. So we're just holding it now. And then we feed this in one lug at a time, just fiddle it in there. Right, that's, that's completely through now. So we can hang that down on the inside. That's not gonna go anywhere, so long as I don't let go of this hook. So the next bit is the split washer. So we just put that on there, thread it onto the cable. This is the fiddle. This insulation doesn't help, by the way. I think I'm gonna have to cut just a little bit more of the insulation away because it's impeding the next part of the job. Once I'm sure that it's watertight, I can put some spray foam back around it. That'll give us room to move. Right. One more time with feeling. And then we just fit all this round. But then we need to put the washer on the inside. So this also has to go inside there these are rated for 60 degrees by the way celsius that is there you are so that's on there you can see that pulling against the body now next washer on the outside so we've got a double seal just make sure there's no debris around there 
we put that one on. Then we put the brass washer on. Now this is one of those exceptions where you do actually apply some jointing compound to the threads. This is a non-setting compound. Put plenty on as Henry Cooper used to say, splash it all over. Just got to lift it slightly now to get it central on that hole so that the washer is covering the hole properly on both sides. Good and tight, squash that washer in. That's plenty. The only thing I've got to do now is get this little wire holder outside. They tell you not to drop it inside, although it's very tempting because it's quite a difficult thing to get out. But I have a cunning plan. We've got to send in a hook. It always helps if you play the Mission Impossible tune while you're doing this bit. So this is the dip pipe and it's got a bird's beak on it. And the bird's beak has to go upwards. So I'll mark along the top of the pipe so we know which is up. And it's got to go in by 75 millimeters into the actual cylinder. The depth of that has got to be added to there. So that's going to be about there. Poke that in the hole. So we put that on. One olive. One nut. Hello, that's nice. That's going to go back in there. So that's the Essex flange fitted and the most difficult part of it for me was getting that little hook back out and I have known people just chuck them in there and forget them but you shouldn't do that. And I did use a press fit fitting here. The only reason I did that is because the only fittings I've got left on the van, 22 mil, are solder elbows. Didn't want to solder because that means I would have flux in there and then I'd have to clean it all out, wash it through. So I thought quick and easy way, press fit fitting. So. I hope you found that interesting. If you've got any comments, any questions, put them in the comments below the video. Uh, I'm Roger Bisbee. Come back and see us soon. We're going to be having more plumbing fun.